How's it going everybody? Too Spooky here, and today, we're going to be counting down 25 facts about Ermac. This video was suggested by... 8 of you guys. Ermac is definitely one of my favorite Mortal Kombat characters, and I'm so happy to see that some of you guys want to learn more about him. So thank you so much to everyone who suggested this video today, and I hope you all enjoy because this one is going out to you. But anyways guys, let's just get started. Number 1. Ermac was only ever created due to fans freaking out about an error from the first game. Underneath reptile battles in game audits, there was the word Ermac. And because it was underneath reptile battles, the rumor began that this was another secret character you could fight in the game. One player even took this rumor to the next level, and claimed that he found Ermac by defeating his friend flawlessly using only punches, and a red ninja appeared saying, I will fight you near the statues, which was thought to be a reference to the warrior's shrine stage. And then later on the red ninja appeared to him once again, and said, I am Ermac, you will never defeat me. The player even submitted photo evidence, although it is likely fake. The developers of Mortal Kombat then later stated that there is no Ermac, nor has there ever been, and they said the word Ermac that appears in the game audits stood for error macros. Number 2. Even though the developers told players that Ermac didn't exist, at the time there were still people out there who believed that Ermac really did exist. So to poke fun at players, the developers included some Ermac related easter eggs in Mortal Kombat 2. When Jade appeared for instance, sometimes she would say, Ermac who? And then at the end of the game there was a word scramble, and when unscrambled it reads, Ermac does not exist. Number 3. Ermac would then make his debut in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, making the legend of Ermac finally become a reality. Although most of you likely already know about Ermac's debut in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, so as a little bonus to this one, something you might not have noticed was that Ermac originally had a darker skin tone, and later on when he appeared again in Mortal Kombat Deception, his skin was a lighter tone. Number 4. In addition to the last fact, in Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, Ermac was shown again with a darker skin tone, and back in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, the second player version of Ermac had lighter skin, and in Mortal Kombat Trilogy, the lighter skinned version of Ermac became the default. Of course, Shaolin Monks came out later on, so it appears as though the developers couldn't decide what skin tone Ermac should really be. Number 5. During the original timeline, Ermac was freed from Shao Kahn by Kenshi, and to repay Kenshi, Ermac taught him how to perform the telekinetic slam. And later on, Ermac decided to join the forces of good, partially because he felt guilty for all the evil things he did in the past. However, in the current timeline, these events did not occur. Number 6. In Mortal Kombat 9, Ermac's primary damage concept was supposed to have his eye hanging out of the socket in his default costume. And although this was never actually included, Ermac was the only character whose eye was shown hanging out of their skull in primary damage concepts. Number 7. In Ermac's ending in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, it states that Ermac will return in the fourth Mortal Kombat. However, Ermac doesn't actually make another appearance until Mortal Kombat Deception. Number 8. Ermac was the second being to be created by Shao Kahn, the first being Melina, and the third being Scarlet. Although, unlike the other two, Ermac was the only one to turn against Shao Kahn. Number 9. In Mortal Kombat 9, Ermac ended up having a very popular quote, which was, We are many. You are but one. Now, in reference to this quote, in Mortal Kombat X, when Ermac goes up against Farah and Tor, he says, We are many. You are but two. Number 10. During Ermac's pest control fatality, he shrinks his enemy and then proceeds to step on them. Now, during this fatality, after his opponent is shrunk, they are seen running around in fear or confusion. However, when Ermac uses this fatality on Kratos, he doesn't actually run around, and instead yells at Ermac before getting stepped on. The God of War has no fear. Number 11. In Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Ermac shared the fatality Uppercut from Hell with Human Smoke, and this fatality was derived from Johnny Cage. Number 12. Ermac is the only male ninja in Mortal Kombat 9 to have a classic costume without a classic fatality. Number 13. 
Ermac is actually immune to telepathy because of all the souls or minds inside his body. Number 14. As most or all of you know, Ermac is composed of many souls that were destroyed by Outworld and were fused together. But exactly how many souls is Ermac composed of? Well, we don't have an exact number, but it has been said before that he is composed of 10,000 souls. So we can likely assume the answer is over 10,000. Number 15. In addition to the last fact, after the events of Mortal Kombat 9, Ermac gained possession of Shao Kahn's soul. And even though it is sometimes implied that Shao Kahn's soul tries to take control of his body, Ermac is generally shown to be in control of his own body, or should I say, their own body. Number 16. During Ermac's arcade ladder ending in Mortal Kombat 9, it was revealed that one of the souls in Ermac's body was King Gerard, who was king of Edania before he was defeated and killed by Shao Kahn. In Ermac's ending, Gerard's soul managed to take over Ermac's body, and then went back to Edania to rule once more, protecting the realm along with Sindel and Kitana. Now, this ending is considered non-canon. However, on Twitter, John Vogel confirmed that Gerard is in fact one of the souls in Ermac's body. Number 17. In one of his introductions against Kung Lao or Tremor in Mortal Kombat X, Ermac refers to himself as me instead of us. Ermac lives. Magic binds me still. For a few more moments. Number 18. Ermac's one true weakness is the Nether Realm itself. This is because of the fact that he was created by magic, and because of this, his power would decrease the longer he stayed in the Nether Realm. This would in turn weaken the bond between his many souls, which threatens his very existence. Number 19. In the game Skullgirls Encore, the character Fakua has a color option based off of Ermac, and she also has one based on Reptile and Rain. Number 20. In Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, there is a hidden fight with Ermac at the Warrior Shrine. And this is actually a reference to the player we talked about in the first fact, who said Ermac said to meet him at the statues. Number 21. Ermac is shown in the intro of Armageddon, but later on it is shown that Ermac was Shang Tsung all along. Although before this transformation, Ermac is shown multiple times, so the question is, was Ermac in the beginning really Ermac, or was it Shang Tsung the whole time? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Number 22. Ermac made an appearance in the animated series, Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm, where in one episode, Ermac and his army attempted to use a female ninja by the name of Ruby to defeat Jax and to lure the other warriors to their doom. In this appearance, Ermac takes off his mask at one point to reveal a very human-looking face, aside from his eyes, which were all white, and he also had a sick goatee. Number 23. During Cassie Cage's selfie fatality, Ermac is one of the people shown to comment on the photo. His screen name is shown to be It's Not Ermac, which is actually a reference to Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, where the announcer would say his name as Ermac instead of Ermac. Ermac wins. Flawless victory. Number 24. Ermac, along with Kano, Sector, Cyrax, and Cyber Sub-Zero, are the few characters who didn't get their eyeballs stuck to the screen during Kenshi's scatterbrain fatality in Mortal Kombat 9. And the moment that you've all been waiting for... Number 25. Because of the fact that Ermac taught Kenshi the telekinetic slam in the original story, Ermac was originally going to be Kenshi's mentor, but this concept was later dropped for multiple reasons. The first was that Kenshi was supposed to be a strong warrior on his own, and they thought this concept would take away from that. This concept was also supposed to give Ermac a more wealthy human look, and because Ermac was known as a ninja, the concept of him looking more human was dropped. But there you have it everybody, 25 facts about Ermac. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today, and hopefully you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like on this video. But that's not all, if you leave a like on this video, there is a 0.2% chance that you will receive telekinetic abilities. That's correct, the chances are slim, but if you are one of the lucky few, you will just wake up and you'll be able to move things with your mind.
Also, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to comment down below what Mortal Kombat character you guys would like to learn about next. Also, make sure to like and follow Too Spooky on his social media and Twitch. You can find those links in the description. His P.O. Box address is also down there in case you want to send him a towel. Thanks, guys. But anyways, if you guys cannot get enough of that too spooky content, well, why don't you click here for 25 facts about Sub-Zero? And if that's not doing it for you, well, why don't you click here for 101 facts about Mortal Kombat? Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you soon with a new video.